So again, the other photo that is produced is still a 2D image. But the elevation data as deri as are derived as a part of the recuperification process. Exact camera parameters and manually identified GCPs on the images were needed to derive the DEM. And the next uh, term is the structure from motion, which is the automated point matching, a camera parameter est estimation, and 3D model generation. So it's how to derive the, all those information from the 2D pictures. There are multiple questions that need to be asked before we do it. How does this magic work? First, there are two given matches on two or more images. Where is the location of this point that is identified or two or more images in three-dimensional three space? Then the stereo matching. So we have point just in one image. How does it constrain the position of the corresponding point, but in another image? And there is a question about the camera, camera geometry. So if we know the set of corresponding points on two or more images, how can we map back, to return back the camera matrices for those views? So how can we estimate the camera distortions based just on the calculations of the corresponding uh, points? This is done through the a process called structure from motion. It's the range imaging technique that comes from the computer vision concepts. And it's the process of estimating the 3D structures from overlapping 2D image sequences. And be, may be also coupled with local motion signals. Sounds really complicated, but we're gonna describe uh, in simple terms, what does this magic actually do? Here you have three uh, photographs of the same uh, item. The structure for motion first identifies the distinguishable point that can be uh, can also be recognized on the other pictures. So here you have the same exact spot on multiple pictures. Then it matches it together finds a lot of tie points. Here I showed you just a couple points, but actually there are hundreds and thousands and sometimes millions of tie points that the structure for motion recognizes. Uh, bundles it all, all together and flips and rotates the photo in this way that this photo, these points will overlap. At the end, the two-dimensional two positions of the point are mapped back and are, uh, are uh, the coordinates X, Y, Z in the local coordinate system are assigned to this point. We can do the same process when we take into account aerial imagery. So we can identify multiple, photo, uh, multiple uh, points uh, through uh, using the structure for motion uh, automatically and uh, make them tie points. Here you can see on five images there is this one orange point that will uh, that's depicted on all the images. And now the structure for motion technique will create a 3D model and assigned the 3D coordinates, which is X, Y, Z, or and the pictures are geotagged, or we have the information from ground control points, it can be a georeferenced uh, position, the latitude, longitude, and altitude, or in any uh, spatial coordinate system that we are working in. This is, it is also important to, stre to stress that through the whole UAS photogrammetry grid process, we need to remember what is our aim, what is the end of our uh, analysis. So uh, when we are planning the flight, when we are processing the data and when we are flying, 
From the very beginning, before we even start planning the flight, we need to ask ourselves a question. What will the data be used for? What kind of analysis I'm going to uh, perform on them? And based on that, we need, to, we need to know how the data needs to be processed and how to ply, plan a flight to have the data that we need for the analysis. Combining everything together, what we have learned today. We have learned the principles uh, of what is remote sensing and photogrammetry. We also learn about aerial imagery and its properties and kinds of aerial imagery. We also know now why do we need autorectification to measure from this aerial imagery. And then about process that allows us to extract three-dimensional data from series of overlapping 2D images. If you would like to know any additional information about structure for motion, go to the uh, course website and on the main side, main site under uh, the recommended box, I highly recommend you uh, to look at the first position, which is the whole book about structure for motion in geosciences. You can not only find a well, well explanation of the concept of structure for motion, but also how it is applied in geosciences with a lot of application examples. It can also trigger you to look for the, um, the scope of your final project. Additional information you will find uh, on the uh, on the um, topic on the uh, on our website when you can see how, what amazing things can be built utilizing uh, the um, structure for motion. Uh, not only the uh, scientific papers, but also uh, the wonderful uh, visualization. Here you have uh, one of the examples, like how the model uh, that uses structure for motion uh, was created. This is done in Sketchfab, which is also something that you can look at uh, here uh, below. There is a link to the Sketchfab account uh, of our lab, and you can see what uh, our test site will be uh, will look like and what other uh, what other uh, 3d models were created in the lab you also uh, can see uh, the models that were built one of the models that were used used during the lab experiment you can also uh, uh, we can also add your um, uh, your model to the account uh, if you would like to